What's good, y'all? It's your boy, HB. Got to drink my coffee. Final round. I'm drinking too much of this shit, tell you the truth. It's caffeine, man. Yeah. It's your boy, HB. Final round, man. Obviously, I'm late on the news, okay? I know most of you are already aware that Spence had to pull out of the fight as a result of a torn retina. And it's a bummer, man. It's a bummer to say the least. Now, I'm going to make a video on whether I think Spence uh, was ducking Pacquiao. I'll make a separate video on that and kind of talking about the disappointment of the event not falling through. Falling through. But uh, right now, I want to talk about the upcoming matchup and the replacement with uh, of Spence with Ugas. And uh, I'm going to give you my prediction for this fight. I think I'm confident enough to make a prediction. I've done a little bit of research on Ugas. I didn't know who the fuck he was uh, until I heard he was going to replace Spence. So I had to get on YouTube and I had to start looking up some highlight films and some do a little uh, analysis of uh, a few of the fights he's been in. Now, the first thing I saw him involved in was Sean Porter. He was up against Sean Porter. And... Uh, I didn't get too much information. I just watched the, the the highlight film and later I watched the full fight. But uh at first glance I I, I was like I was he he's got some stuff. You know, he 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 looks all right. He looks like a solid fighter. I mean, I believe he has one of the belts. If you got a belt in, in boxing, man, you got something, right? You got you you're working with something. You're not complete garbage, okay? Um uh, but, you know, I saw a highlight of him and Sean Porter facing off, and he looked pretty solid. He looked solid. It looked like he had some uh, thud to his punches, and uh, he, he looked all right, you, you know. But I had to do a little bit more digging. I wanted to get more a sense of his style and his kind of temperament in the ring and what he was about. So I had to start watching full fights with him. And I watched him, obviously, the full fight with Sean Porter. I watched him go up, go up against Omar Figueroa, and I watched a few other fights. And I also watched a very interesting uh, footage with him sparring Tiafimo Lopez. And I have to say, man, uh, I think Pacquiao is going to win this fight by TKO or knockout. Mark my words. Now, there's always that chance that Pacquiao may age overnight, but I don't think that's going to be the case. I really don't. But let me tell you why I think this is going to be another big victory for Manny Pacquiao. When I was watching Ugas, I noticed that he can't throw punches without setting his feet. And to me, that's a big red 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 flag that's a huge red flag especially when you're facing off against a guy like Pacquiao uh it's not that he can't move a little bit but I I just noticed in each of those full fights that I examined Ugas cannot stick and move he has to set his feet before he punches and the times that he doesn't he throws these and, and here's another thing to know. Ugas has these wide looping punches at times. They're a little Wilder-esque. You know what I'm saying? Deontay Wilder-esque. And they can get very wide and loopy. And sometimes he'll try to throw a punch when his feet aren't, aren't set. And he'll get off balance completely to where he, like he's literally leaning over. His chin is over his feet. He's kind of losing balance and tripping. And to me, that's a huge red flag. That's a huge no-no and a huge red flag, especially especially against a guy like Pacquiao, who will box circles around you. And he's in. And on top of that, Ugas is an orthodox fighter. Pacquiao is going to take advantage of those angles, and he's going to box circles around you. And I think this is going to be a huge, huge. I think it's going to be a mismatch in a sense. Like I said, unless Pacquiao just gets significantly older overnight. Ooh, it's not, I don't think it's going to be pretty for Ugas, but I will say this about Ugas. I do like that he goes down to the body. He'll throw some body shots and combinations. And uh, he did show significant improvement from 
his fight from uh, with uh, Omar Figueroa going all the way or uh, up into Sean Porter. I don't know how many fights he had in between. I don't know if they were back to back, but regardless, he showed significant improvement uh, with that fight in his boxing ability than he did with Omar Figueroa. Now, I know Omar Figueroa is kind of a, I don't want to say sloppy fighter. Well, he kind of is sloppy, you know, more so of a brawler. He'll switch in and out of stances constantly. And, you know, he kind of wants to uh, throw down in the pocket. But nonetheless, uh, that's no excuse to fall down to that level of fighting uh, when you go up against the opponent like that. In fact, you should be able to display your boxing abilities more easily uh, when you go up against the opponent like that. Another thing that alarmed me in that Omar figure, there was a few things that alarmed me with that Figueroa fight. Obviously, like I said, I noticed that Ugas just, he has to plant his feet. Like, it's it's so apparent. It's weird. It's very weird. Like, how badly. It's almost like he's scared to throw a punch while moving his feet. That's how bad it looked. And uh, I noticed this because Omar Figueroa, when he would get into the pocket with Ugas, Ugas would not turn him. He wouldn't pivot out. You know, uh... The, every time they got into close quarters, Ugas would just clinch. He would either A, clinch, B, he would push uh, Figueroa off him, or C, he would pull back. And it was very confusing to me because I'm sitting there thinking like, why isn't this guy turning his opponent? Like, he, he's, his opponent is not that skilled. His opponent is just recklessly walking inside uh, trying to get to the inside, and uh, he's not, and, and Figueroa wasn't really being very active uh, while he was on the inside, like, it. so it confused me, I was like, why isn't Ugas turning this guy, why isn't he turning his opponent, why isn't he pivoting, why, why isn't he L-stepping, why isn't he utilizing his jab, you know, if you're gonna kind of put on a boxing display, that's the perfect opponent to do it against, and he didn't do it. But here's the weird thing. He goes on to the Sean Porter fight and he looks significantly better. Now, I still see a guy who struggles that needs to plant his feet before he throw punch. He throws punches, but his jab was significantly better in the Sean Porter fight. And I like that he was going down to the body early on in that fight with Sean Porter. He and his jab looked a lot sharper. Uh and he was throwing combinations to the body. And I'll give him that for the Figueroa fight. He did go down to the body a lot. He threw some great combinations to the body. And he does have some good power. He has some good solid power because he did knock Figueroa down with the right hand uh, early on in the fight. So he's got a few things going for him. There's a reason he's a champ. He's got some power. He's got some grit. Uh, you know, when he wants to use his jab, it's fairly good. And he does go down to the body. And, and right there alone is enough to make you a pretty decent, solid fighter. So there are some things going on for him. He might be one of those guys that he kind of performs at the level of his opponents, right? But uh, I don't think he's going to do too well against Pacquiao, especially he doesn't have a jab that I think he's going to be able to contend. That's the thing with Spence. I, I don't even think Spence would be able to hang with Pacquiao but here's the thing. Spence has a very good fucking jab. It's almost like Ugas is a very poor man ver poor man's version of Spence in an orthodox fighting stance. That's that's essentially what I get from him. And, you know, I would say he's kind of like a boxer puncher counter type guy. Uh, but overall, even though his jab looks significantly better against Sean Porter, it's still not the type of jab that I think is going to be able to stop Pacquiao from working his way in and kind of working his angles, throwing his combinations, throwing that beautiful lead left hand where he slips your jab and then he pivots out. Uh, this is going to be trouble for Ugas. I, I see a lot of trouble with him. His best shot in this fight is to work his jab as best as possible and get those body shots in. Which he, ha which he can do very well, so I'll give him that. But he has to be consistent. But I don't think he's going to find Pacquiao at all in this fight. I think he's going. Pacquiao's going to be a ghost. He's not going to be able to touch him. 
Ugas is just, he's stuck in the mud. He has cement feet. He throws himself off balance the times he does try to uh, uh, stick and move. Uh, he doesn't know how to turn his opponents. Uh, and, 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 you know, obviously when I saw him against Omar Figueroa and he was fighting on the inside, he doesn't have any inside game as well. And it's not so much that I'm worried about Pacquiao beating him up on the inside because obviously Pacquiao likes to work around, you know, box circles around you and, you know, utilize those angles. So it's not so much that I'm worried about Ugas getting beat up on the inside by Pacquiao. It's more so that the guy doesn't have any footwork. He doesn't have any footwork. And that's going to be a huge problem. How are you going to beat fucking Manny Pacquiao um, if you can't if you can't catch up to him, if you can't position yourself? And, and, and that was one of the big red flags to me. It's like not only do you not have the footwork when I saw him go up against Omar Figueroa, like you don't know, you don't understand positioning. And, and like when you're fighting on the inside, right, you don't need like spectacular footwork. You just need to understand maybe head placement you know, uh, body placement or maybe taking a step back so you don't smother yourself or, or just taking a, a, a small little step to the left or the right. You know what I'm saying? Like you don't need to have like fucking fast feet when you're fighting on the inside. Uh, so it also showed me that Ugas probably doesn't have a good understanding, a great understanding of positioning. So you don't have a great understanding of positioning. You don't have any foot, uh, uh, good footwork. You know, you can't punch while moving. Your jab is, it's on and off. Sometimes in fights it looks good and sometimes in other fights it's not really, you know, a factor. And, you know, I, I just don't see how Pacquiao loses this fight. Like I said, unless he just gets significantly older in one night i see this uh, i see pacquiao winning by tko or even knockout i really do and at the you know obviously at the very least uh winning on the scorecards but i see pacquiao winning this fight undeniably by tko or knock knockout uh yes i train out the wild card gym yes i support all the wild card boxers shout out to casemiro for beating rigandell representing wild card as well but I'm telling you, bias aside and support for Manny Pacquiao because, you know, uh, I'm training in L.A. in Hollywood. He's going to win this fight. He's going to win by KO or TKO. As long as he's not coming into this fight injured or he doesn't significantly age, he's going to win this fight. Mark my words, TKO or knockout. This is your boy HB with final round. Uh, oh, one more thing. The only other thing I'd be concerned about Pacquiao for this fight is maybe he gets a little too overconfident. Maybe he gets a little complacent because I will say this. Sometimes I'm not so much worried about the adjustment because obviously I think it'll be an easy adjustment for him. It's not like he's going from he's been training for an orthodox throughout the whole camp and now taking on a southpaw at the last minute. He's going from training for a southpaw fighter. And I know he's been sparring against orthodox fighter, even though he's training for Spence. Uh, but nonetheless, I think it's going to be an easy transition for him because it's going to be from south. It's going, he was training for a southpaw and now he's going to an orthodox fighter where he, he, he thrives at. You know, that was one of my concerns for him against Spence was he hasn't taken on another southpaw in a long time. And not only just... Has he not taken a, an, on another southpaw in years, an official fight? Uh, Spence has a phenomenal stiff jab. But uh, this guy in Ugas, the, his jab is not going to be on the same level as Spence's. Uh, his footwork, not even going to be on the same level. Uh, and he's going to be an orthodox fighter. And I think that Pacquiao is going to be able uh, to make any sort of adjustments. It sounds like Boo Boy, his trainer, Boo Boy and uh, Freddie Roach have already game, game, came up with a game plan and see weaknesses they're going to try to expose. I don't think the transition from uh, Spence to Ugas is going to be an issue at all. Like I said, I know Pacquiao has been sparring against orthodox fighters through camp too. So 
Uh, it's and this is I mean this is what he's been doing his whole life beating up orthodox fighters. That's probably where he gets a lot of his advantages from that comfort of going up against right-handed fighters. Uh, the only thing I think it would be mental, but Manny Pacquiao doesn't seem to be the guy who takes shit for granted. Uh, he doesn't seem to be that dude, man. And he he he, te he tends to respect all his opponents. And uh, he goes into every fight, you know, he, he seems, you know, he goes into every fight trying to win. But, uh, you know, I'll say this with Jeff Horn, it looked like he, he wasn't, you know, himself for a little bit. But Jeff Horn, Horn's very awkward, very awkward fighter. Uh, so that would be my only concern. You know, you go from this exciting fight with Spence and, you know, you want to take on this big challenge and then they kind of give you Ugas is not well known. But uh, nonetheless, it's still an impressive victory for Pacquiao, being a guy younger than him, I believe. And uh, he has a belt. He's uh, he's a, he's competing, you know, at his highest level. So even it, look, we got to appreciate this. We might not see Manny Pacquiao ever again, man. This might be his last fight. I don't think it will be, especially if he performs well. I think it'll be very contingent on how he performs for this fight. But uh you never know. It could be the last fight we time we see Manny Pacquiao fight, especially against a good competitor. Now, I know this is I feel like it's going to be a mismatch, but nonetheless, he's facing another uh title holder, and that's impressive, man. The only other guy I think who was doing crazy shit like this at 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 Pacquiao's age was Bernard Hopkins. Uh so like Look, man, this is exciting, and uh, it could be the last time, or it could be the second to last time. Nonetheless, I'm going to be watching, and I'm going to be impressed if Pacquiao pulls out the victory. I shouldn't say pull, but if he wins, it's just, I'm still going to be impressed, even though I expect him to win. Uh, so, yeah, let me know what you think, you guys. Comment down below. Like my video. Subscribe. I remember my subscribers. I'm an up-and-coming young boxer, and when I start doing my shit, I'm going to remember the people who roll with me in the beginning. So like the video, subscribe. Don't hate, man. No negative vibes. Don't be thumbing down my video. Uh, just don't watch the shit, man. I mean, I'm not doing anything fucking egregious. Uh, but uh, yeah, man, subscribe, man. I love talking sports. I love boxing. I love MMA. This is what we do, man. I'm just trying to share my opinions and thoughts and my experience and you know, help others out, and yeah, man, but uh, this is your boy HB, man, keep it real, stay safe out here, uh, we need to change these liberal policies in Los Angeles, it's fucking crazy, but until then, man, peace and love, get at me.